We're here after the sermon. Uh, John preached to us this past Sunday out of Psalm 98. Uh, we are singing a new song to the Lord. It is uh, making a joyful noise to the Lord. It's all about singing to the Lord. What a wonderful psalm, a wonderful sermon to hear. It's reasons to uh, marvel at the Lord. And uh, what our, our uh, praise is supposed to sound like is supposed to be joyful. It's supposed to be loud. And uh, there's a lot of, a lot of good uh, material in that message, a lot of good material to go over. So we had a couple of questions, a couple of follow-up questions to, to talk about and uh, maybe to spark some interest in our discussion around our tables this evening. And so I kind of want to start off with this question um, now. What do you do, and, and you kind of covered this in the message, but I, I think you kind of wanted to dive into this a little bit more. At least I hope you do, because we're going to do that now. What do, what do you do when you uh, don't feel like singing? And the reason I want to follow up with that is because there's some people who come to church really because they enjoy singing so much. Uh, they, they really come to church for the music. Uh, they really enjoy the music. Uh, they really the the sermon's kind of an afterthought for them maybe the prayers are kind of an afterthought they really like music and then there's others who really don't care for music yeah. uh, they're not singing they're they could live without the music and say hey just give me the reading of the word give me the preaching of the word give me the prayers and i can live without the music so what do you do when you don't feel like singing what do you do when you you kind of like i like one or the other yeah how, how do you approach that well it, so in the sermon i i referenced psalm 40 um where david um yeah, and that's not the only psalm where he does this, where David struggles to have that sort of joy, that desire to sing. And what Psalm 40 basically says is that he waited on the Lord. And as he waited on the Lord, and I think the idea there is that it's an expectant waiting. It's not just a sitting doing nothing. But as he waited on the Lord, prayed to the Lord, God actually gave him reasons to sing mm -hmm. and gave him a song. Um, so there is a sense in which we do need to wait on the Lord. I, but I, I think there's other, not only other things we can do, but there's other parts to that as well, right? Um, one of the things to ask, if, if, I, if I really struggle to sing, mm -hmm. is to ask myself, okay, Lord, search my heart. What is the reason? What is my struggle here? Because maybe the struggle is just, I'm a shy person. Mm -hmm. God loves shy people. And, and, and I don't think Psalm 98 is saying, if you're shy, stop being shy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's necessarily what's being said. Um, I, so I, what is the room for the person who's just struggles to say things in front of people to sing things in front of people well the question is like what where's your heart at right yeah. i think john piper actually has a great he answered this question a long time ago i've just never forgotten the illustration and what he said is you know go into your room and start singing praise songs and if you can do that in with any amount of passion and real realism mm -hmm. with um with being truthful, yeah. singing praises to God. If, that, if that's not a struggle for you, then you know you're a shy person, okay? And and so as you step back into the mm -hmm. into worship, be be aware of that and maybe ask God to help you to sing in any, any amount. But as, as now you know at least mm -hmm. the problem is not mm -hmm. my heart does, doesn't want to praise mm -hmm. God because that would be the bigger issue. Um, but what else? What do you guess? What do you think about, I'm going to throw an idea out, okay? I'm going to preface it by saying this, might be off, so it gives you guys a chance to, to speak against <laughs> it if you want to. Okay, I'm opening it up for you. What if what if there is something about singing, all right? Um, and our kind of therapeutic culture in general, mm. where we don't, um, where we want to excuse ourselves from things that are uncomfortable or difficult, right? Yeah. So when we're called to add our voices to the people of God in worship, we say that's uncomfortable. And then we try and find reasons to excuse ourselves because that's what we do as a people and as a culture in general. Yeah. Whereas singing should be thought less of a personal expression and more, especially in the church context, as a participation in what God's called us to. Yeah. You know, if it's time to get together for dinner and child says, I don't want to come to the table and eat in my room. No, no, we, we eat dinner together. That's what we do as a family. Similarly, when we are called, God calls us to come together as his people and to add our voices in song. Mm -hmm. And when we don't necessarily get the, um, the, 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 the authority to opt out 
Yeah. Because that's what the people of God do when they gather. In fact, scripture, the psalm, all the psalms are full of that command and expectation. Mm -hmm. So is it too much to say that if singing isn't your thing, part of what it means is growing as a Christian and growing in yeah. God is that you learn to participate in maybe things that are difficult or foreign because that's what we, we do. Yeah. Toddlers learn how to, babies learn how to, how to crawl and learn how to walk and then to run. And that's just part of Christian life, learning how to sing, even if it's not natural to you. Yeah. Um, I don't mean learning how, I mean learn how to sing well, but I mean actually participating is part of what it means to mature and participate in the family of God. And that can be difficult, but that's okay. It is. Yeah. And, and, you know, you mentioned the cultural aspect of that. Um, I think, I think one of the, one of the problems might be too, that we don't, there, how many, what are the other avenues where we apply singing to the celebration of someone else? We did it this morning. Yeah. You guys sang happy birthday to me. Thank that's you right. for that. Right. <laughs> but, but, like we what tried. Else? I tried to we sing. We tried to sing happy birthday. But, <laughs> but like what else? Yeah. most of the singing we do culturally yeah. is about singing things that we just, we, we think are catchy or singing things that we just enjoy or singing things that speak to us and make us feel mm -hmm. or think a certain way. Got it. You can't really apply that to worship because worship is about the adoration of your creator. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's about singing in such a way that I am lifting up his name. I'm hmm. and like Hebrews 13. I am I with my fruitful lips. I am acknowledging his name and a lot of worship. We don't a lot of singing rather in our culture. We just don't do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues might be that we just, we have to get past Mm -hmm. the way we culturally think yeah. about singing and realize worship is something that's different. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. yeah, that might be another, maybe there's a practical side to this too. Yeah. And you know, I was, I was thinking about the practical part of it too. You, everything you guys said was, it's true. It's absolutely true. The, the, the theological part of it, you true. know, the cultural part of it, all, all of that's absolutely true. But Wednesday night is a good example, okay. I think, of of what takes place. And and John, you're you're with the youth on Wednesday night, so you don't get to experience yeah. this as often as Anthony and I do. But one of the things that we do on Wednesday night is we open up usually with a hymn. Okay. Usually, it's a very familiar hymn mm -hmm. for everybody, and we're in a smaller space mm -hmm. and we're closer together yeah. uh, around tables. And so we stand, and Stephanie leads us on the piano. And we sing mm -hmm. together, and it's typically louder mm -hmm. than what it is even in our in our congregational setting on Sunday morning. And and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Okay. I think the main reason for that is not because we're more fam familiar with the song. It's not just because of the people that are gathered. I think it is a is a very practical reason. We are closer together mm -hmm. in a in a tighter space. Okay. What's happened to us, I think, over the course of the last couple of years with COVID and, mm -hmm. you know, distancing, and we've, we've gotten to the place in our culture where we are now afraid to get close to each other. And now people are more spread out. And I get to see this really once a month mm -hmm. where one of you men are preaching instead of me, and I'm, I'm sitting toward the back with Danny instead of being up front preaching. And so I get to see how distanced yeah. people are from one another. And so what happens often, just, just in, a, in, a, in a very practical sense, if people are further apart from each other, it's harder to sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the choir, just notice the choir, notice how close together the choir is. There's a reason for that. The closer you are to people, the easier it is to sing. Because yeah. none of us, at least most of us, don't like to hear the sound of our own voice while we're singing. <laughs> we like to hear the sound of our voices blended together with other people. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you, um, those of you that are watching this video, those of you that are here on Wednesday night watching the video, I want you to try this on Sunday. Instead of spreading out all over the congregation on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. try sitting closer to the front toward one another and see how much better you sing. Mm -hmm. See how much easier it is to sing with the rest of the congregation as, as you sit closer together, closer to one another mm -hmm. and sing with each other and see if that solves a little bit of the dilemma for you. Because what I notice is the further I sit back, the harder it is for me to sing. Yeah. Because I don't like to hear the sound of my voice singing either. And uh, probably the people around me don't like to hear the sound of my voice singing either, but that's, that's okay. They have to put up with it if they don't sing louder. <laughs> so that's just the, just a practical observation from that, because I, I think most of us really desire to yeah. sing. Yeah. So. Got to have one more? Yeah, one more. Okay. One so more just, um, 
this idea of, of worshiping and singing, kind of coming to land with the idea of judgment and righteousness yeah. and equity. Um, I think of all the reasons why people would naturally, in quotes, right, naturally want to praise God, naturally want to sing God, sing to Him and glorify Him. His judgment is probably not yeah. one of the things coming to the forefront. Um, I don't know. The question probably isn't why is that, um, but how can we come to worship God um, in light of His righteousness and judgment? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I, and I touched on this in the sermon, yeah. the, the fact that, we, you know, as, as a society today, the world mm -hmm. really doesn't, doesn't get mm -hmm. that God is actually the judge, yeah. that he is ruling and reigning now, and he will one day do a final judgment of mm -hmm. the world. And he is really, yeah. um, you know, one of your favorite passages, the judge of all the earth will actually do right. He yeah. will actually do right. And I think, sadly, a lot of Christians don't live in a way with, as if they actually believe that because mm -hmm. if you really really believe that that changes the way you live it right you, like suddenly it is not a huge injustice for me to be wronged why the judge of all the earth will do right mm -hmm. suddenly it, it is not the end of the world mm -hmm. for me to lose this most precious thing mm -hmm. to me whether that's a person or whatever mm -hmm. why the judge of all the earth will do right like if i really trust in the sovereignty of god to do that mm -hmm then that changes the way I live and therefore it, it obviously should change the way I sing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, yeah, I just think that the, the world does not want to believe that. Mm -hmm. and, and so right now it is, it is shouting for justice mm -hmm. and, and God's word makes it very clear. You know, here, here is justice. Mm -hmm. Here's where real justice is. And, mm -hmm. and that, that should be something we celebrate in anticipation. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and sadly we don't. We should though. Amen. All right, that's about all the time we have for this evening. And so I look forward to the discussion around the tables. Lord willing, we'll do this again next week. God bless. <laughs>